this year, the government announced the plan to force cigarettes into plain packaging. Tonight, we look at a campaign to derail that plan. During the election, more than $5 million was pumped into controversial ads from a previously unheard of group called the Alliance of Australian Retailers, or R. Recently... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cooler if they sound like pirates. Um, <laughs> recently, those ads have returned to our TV, radio and newspapers with another four million spent to air them during the footy finals. Here's one you might have seen. Good policies require more than good intentions. The government plans to put all cigarettes in plain packaging. But this was rejected in the UK and Canada. And there's no real evidence it works. Every state in Australia is already making it illegal to have cigarettes on display. So if my customers can't see them... How will plain packaging make any difference? Plain packaging. It won't work, so why do it? Todd, while the company you run, Leo Burnett of Sydney, doesn't work on tobacco, your global company has the Philip Morris account. Uh, how much R&D goes into packaging for a brand, any brand? Yeah, I mean, packaging is hugely important. Uh, there's hundreds of millions of dollars going into packaging. There's, in, t in some categories, there's entire teams dedicated just to the packaging, the look, the feel, the touch, the green issues. Uh, it's huge. It's part science, it's part uh, art, it's part technology. What this campaign does for me, it, it reminds me of the heritage of brands. So if you go right back 150 years, um, you could have any form of oats, if you like, or any form of cocoa, any form of coffee. And what happened is someone said, actually, what we're going to do, Cadbury, we're going to put a, our name on it. And therefore, it became a no. It became trustworthy because you know, oh, Cadbury is something that I trust to put in my mouth, yeah. Because I don't know whether I should. Tr I can trust the other product. So yes, it's a brand, but often it's, like, it's a trust mark, if you like. So you take it away, and therefore, perhaps you lose some of the trust. It's, it's pretty. It's a pretty tense situation to lose your packaging. Now, Dan, if you were a laundry detergent brand and they told you you had to have plain packaging, what would happen? Would you panic? Well, I think you'd be really worried because I think, you know, branding is critical to differentiating one product from another. Dan, can I just say, you say you, you think that they would be worried. You don't think that they'll be worried. You know... No, of course. ..that they would be petrified. Mm. Yeah. You know what yeah. they'd have to do? Make their product addictive, like cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> then they could just keep selling them anyway. <laughs> the Alliance of Australian Retailers, made up of organisations representing corner stores, service stations, news agents and milk bars, was put together for this campaign. Organised and funded by the three big tobacco companies. The technical term for this is astroturfing. Now, Carolyn, what does astroturfing mean? OK, astroturfing is an interesting idea where you start messaging through mediums. It's usually in cases where you are not legally allowed to talk directly to your consumer, and pharmaceutical companies are all over this like a rash as well. So what happens is you basically engage with a medium, so whether or not that's an endorser or you create a third company or something that kind of acts as a conduit, and might have another conduit after that, and then they talk to the consumer. Mm. So basically what it is is creating a whole system so that you are not breaking the law by talking directly to who's buying so, your product. So I don't understand why they chose to AstroTurf, mm. and I wonder whether it's because they've been so shy for so long that they didn't know, actually, that maybe this was an opportunity just to put their perspective out there. But wouldn't it well, be, as consumers, people would be naturally turned off by big uh, tobacco companies coming out saying, we don't want plain packaging? Well, no, I, but I, 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 think, no, but I think that's exactly it. I think it's a lot easier to feel so, so, sorry for a small business owner mm -hmm. saying, hey, this is going to hurt my business, it's yeah. going to hurt my livelihood. That poor little woman at British the British American 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 I, I understand that. You don't feel sorry for no. a big tobacco guy who's made millions of dollars killing people. Yeah, maybe not, but the story, the story within half an hour was an astroturfing story. The story really... That was a bigger story than the advertising itself. It was who was funding the advertising. So that therefore sort of sounds all conspiratorial. That doesn't, is a good point. It so doesn't need Dan, to be that, conspiratorial. Is this the problem, Dan, that they... Because it was very easy to find out that yeah. who, who it was done by... Well, and, they made it clear on, the, on their website. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, so are you saying that it would have been better just to be completely honest and upfront? Yeah, from that's what I don't understand why they weren't. It's a little bit cynical, but I have a feeling this, this was a, a little bit deliberate. It was a way to talk about cigarettes on television again. All right, well, the Alliance ad makes the case that cigarettes are already out of sight, so plain packaging would be pointless. If they're already out of sight, then does it matter what packets they're in? The whole 
uh, you know, they're out of sight, so it doesn't matter. We, well, she's clearly a lie, because they're out of sight while they're in the shop. But as soon as you've purchased one, it's in your hand, it's in the public domain, people can see the brand that you're smoking. So even though they're saying, you know, they're, they're already out of sight, so why does branding matter? Well, it matters a lot, because depending on who you see smoking, that attributes value to the brand. And we, we see more techniques to try to get that branding back on the products. I know I've seen that, you know, when the warnings first came onto cigarettes, some of the companies put out tins with their yeah. label that you could put them in so you didn't have to see no, the warning but it still had the de branding. Definitely. That would be the, the first thing I think they'd think of doing is um, allowing consumers to reflect the brand that they're smoking. Mm. And it might be done through decals, it might be done through, um, you know, slide packs that you can throw things into. And we saw this in, you know, in the, in the 1980s when, when cigarette advertising first got restricted and you couldn't put the name or, or a packet into a poster, Benson and Hedges did all gold ads. Silk Cut did all purple ads. Mm. And so a colour can actually brand um, a, a packet of cigarettes, and I think that's what you'll start to see well, that, if they and, go to a plain white pack. And of course, what's really interesting is you can use the warning. The warning actually gets over the first hurdle, which is this is for cigarettes. <laughs> so you can actually use the warning to help you with your branding. They've already had the challenge of, you know, the graphic, the, the, the sort of the, the graphics, you know, the cancerous images. People going into stores and actually just ordering the image. I'll yeah. have the toothless one. Please. Yes, okay, I'll, I'll have the gangrene. I'll have the gangrene. I'll have the foot one. I'll go with that one. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> uh, the ad tells us twice that there's no evidence debranding will work. But according to our research, that's only because it hasn't yet been tried anywhere. Dan, what sort of risk do they run making a claim that can be disproven? within a couple of clicks on Google. Well, look, you know, I think they, you know, they're running it during an election campaign. They're probably hoping it will blend with the other bullshit. But I think, um, <laughs> I, I, look, I don't think that they're, they're that clumsy that they'd lie outright. I guarantee you they've got some research that they're sitting on that will back up their point. And it's easy to commission research that finds the result that you want. Carolyn, if it's important enough for Big Tobacco to spend $9 million telling us the branding's not going to work, doesn't that on its own suggest that it will. Um, that would be a logical conclusion to come to, but there's something else that I take out of this ad which I think is really important and that I find fundamentally wrong is that they've completely lost control over what they can do with their product. This is the thing that bugs me. This is a perfectly legal product for people to buy over the age of 18. So, I mean, if you can go and buy a sex DVD with any cover on it that you like, based on any kind of ratings, why shouldn't you be able to choose which brand of cigarettes and you want? Yeah, that. although masturbating doesn't kill quite as many people as smoking. <laughs> in the restaurant. Go outside in the street. <laughs> there are children in here. That's right. You start with the no section yeah. and then you move on. You know what? I do wonder, I do wonder if, you, if you make it more dirty and if you make it more and more difficult and more and more sort of in inverted commas illegal, is that going to make it more attractive for teenagers? But, but this is a product that has, has been proven to kill. Doesn't that make it different to just, you know, washing powder or something like that? Shouldn't we as a society be doing something to, to, to ease it out of society? But, um, you know, I think choice as individuals is really important. And I hate that government is becoming more and more responsible for the actions of individual people. This is serious. You know, and this is serious on a global level. This year, the, the lifeblood of these companies is their brands. And so you have one country in the world who is saying, you know what, we're going to take your brand away from you. So you, are, you say, hang on a second, this, is, this isn't good news, boys. Yeah, there's a potential domino effect. So they have to come out and they've got to, they have to fight. There's intellectual property behind all this. There is potential court cases behind this. This is not some, you know, simple idea that they're just going to say, oh, OK, you've taken away all that other stuff, so just take this bit away as well. It's, it's much more hardcore than that, yeah. and I don't think it's got anything to do, from a tobacco's perspective, of being worried about a decreasing in sales. The Gruen Transfer, a new full-on flavour experience. <laughs>